Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Today we're going to be checking out Green Lanterns issues 5, 6 and 7 by Jeremy Adams, Zermanico, Scott Godlucy and Amanke Nahulpan. Hal Jordan's game of cat and mouse with Sinestro comes to a head as the villain launches a worldwide attack with the drones he hacked from Ferris Air. Hal springs into action and tries to determine what Sinestro's end goal is by spreading wanton panic and death around the world. Jeremy Adams writes some pretty classic Hal Jordan action in these issues as he's forced to team up with Carol and Nathan to work out where Sinestro is striking from. And his recent talk with Flash really did some wonders with Hal as he's kind of dropped all of the sort of jealous ex-boyfriend stuff with Nathan and Carol and he's no longer like trying to like pine after Carol or anything. He's just there to get the job done and Hal does this all the time as well and I really like that there's like a professionalism there where he knows like it's a serious situation so he's just gonna like focus on the mission. Hal eventually does stop all of the drones with some impressive use of constructs and learns that Sinestro is sowing fear into the people of Earth in the hopes that it will charge his ring and allow him to leave Earth. This comes to a head when it's revealed that he was never really after fear energy or fear energy was just sort of like a contingency plan since instead he wanted rage as he becomes a Red Lantern, almost cracking the world in half had it not been for Hal and his giant mech construct. Throughout issues 5 and 6, Adam scripts some really impressive action and Zermanico and Scott Godlewski bring it to life with their detailed vibrant artwork. You'll always get points from me if you do a Green Lantern book that includes some really fun and interesting constructs and isn't just like the usual ones like oh, uh, like a slightly bigger fist or just like a laser beam or something. This one had so many really interesting things like how making a, an arrowhead construct around him so he can fly faster and be like something that can drive into an object. And then he's got the giant mech in issue 6 and it's just really fun looking constructs and takes a good writer to do that and not just resort to like, ah, oh, laser beams, swords, all that sort of stuff, the usual stuff we often see. Sinestro eventually realizes that Hal evenly matches him, deciding to leave and escape into space through the United Planets blockade around Earth's sector. And thanks to that blockade, Hal cannot follow him. Adams doesn't leave the issue off there, no, he has one more twist in that Razor, the Red Lantern from the Green Lantern animated series, he was in Young Justice and he's been kind of canonized lately in comics, comes to see Hal and asks why he's talking with Kilowog, uh, which is quite interesting since as it's revealed by Hal, Kilowog in these issues isn't actually there, Kilowog in these issues is a construct as Kilowog is long dead and it's Hal's fault he is dead. Now that's a pretty big cliffhanger of issue 5 and it builds off the mystery surrounding Hal's exile to Earth and from the core that Adams has been sort of hinting at over the last five issues and he uses issue 7 to sort of lay that all forward. In issue 7 we head back into the past and we find the United Planets has taken over the Green Lantern core in the wake of the central power battery blowing up and the core being decimated so they plan on gathering what lanterns there are and reassigning them where they are needed most which means most of Earth's Green Lanterns get reassigned to various other spots and kind of all split up and on top of that they are quarantining Earth and its sector thanks to all of the various dark crises and events that happen there they they can't deal with that so they're just going to put it in a box and sort it out at a later date. The human lanterns don't particularly like this and Hal refuses to bend to the new boss's rules and it's only Kilowog being there that convinces him to take a new assignment while the other human lanterns are all reassigned across the galaxy as well. Like Guy Gardner being sent after Lobo, a story which will pay off in the backups of this book a little later on in a couple of issues and in the Superman event House of Brainiac. This is the sort of stuff I kind of like in a Green Lantern book and while it's all sort of expository and characters standing around talking. I like seeing the inner workings of the Green Lantern Corps and like what goes on behind the scenes of this huge space cop organization. It's always really fun seeing the inner workings and the political angle as well with like people vying for power against the Guardians and in this case Lord Premier Tharos, the leader of the United Planets. And if you've been following the War World saga here on my channel, uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson's recent uh, amazing Superman story, uh, Tharos actually debuted in that book and it's there we find out that while he is the leader of the United Planets, he's kind of a bit of a slimy bugger as he's currying favor with people like Mongol 
rule and other warlords uh, to just kind of stay in power more or less. And that's sort of the crux of issue 7 here as we find out that he heads to Karuga to curry favour with Supreme Leader Sinestro and it's up to Hal and Kilowog to act as his bodyguards. Once the book got into Karuga it, it was a load of fun. It was just Adams just having real fun with a sort of moustache twirling villainous Sinestro who's just sitting there in his big chair just goading Hal and you know calling him boy and just sort of poking the bear a little bit just to get him to act and react and it's all part of a bigger plan as the Yellow Lanterns uh, who Sinestro claims are rogue lanterns attack Tharos and try and kill him and they end up actually killing Kilowog in the process as he defends the Lord Premier and the power battery on Karuga ends up blowing up. Again another sort of victim to this emotional spectrum wave thing that's been going on in the back of these books that still isn't really all explained all that much. They haven't really touched on it and I'm guessing that's where it's headed and Adams will dive into it a little bit more in the coming issues I have to assume. But as for backstory right now Adams provided like a good chunk of it. It's not all fully revealed yet but he's done a great job of just using this one issue to cram so much in and sort of explain the situation of why Hal would have left the Green Lantern Corps, like what the state of the Corps was and the state of Sinestro and his rule and what made Sinestro want to come after him again thanks to the power battery blowing up and everything. So he did a really good job in just this one issue just sort of laying the groundwork for like okay this is where we are in the Green Lantern timeline more or less. But much like issue 6 he again gives us a kind of cliffhanger ending as we find out that Razor has come to Earth not just to talk to Hal about why Kilowog is dead and everything but also because the power battery on Odom has been destroyed as well meaning that's at least four power batteries that have blown up right now and again it's this more emotional spectrum wave thing that's been happening that Hal has been dealing with and with his ring so I'm really looking forward to him getting into that in the next couple of issues before we head into House of Brainiac backups and everything and I'm looking forward to seeing where Adams takes this because he's gone through Sinestro, we've had Red Lanterns, we've had the United Planets, all of these really interesting concepts so like where does he go from here and I'm intrigued to find out. I'm going to give Green Lanterns issues 5, 6 and 7 an 8.5 out of 10 so definitely check it out it's definitely worth your time. 